first thing this morning I want to talk about, guys, we're doing a, a great job. Uh, everyone looks good out there. Continue to do what you're doing. Um, we're approaching the last few days in July. I'd like to focus on closing out the month safely. We are coordinating together because we're improving together because we're on the biggest job together. And I'm very proud of each and every one of you out here. All right, let's watch out for each other. Let's go ahead and move forward. Thank you very much. We're at the vertical uh, construction right now of the concrete core. So this building is actually two different elements where it's actually a concrete core followed by a structural steel uh, element as far as the structure for the tower. So we're actually in the middle of uh, actually starting the concrete core structure. Well, I uh, did layout for center line and elevation uh, on the shear tab for our beam that will tie in from that column out there. That's a pretty good weld vertical uh, 5 16 fillet. I think it's a fantastic opportunity. I'm glad I, I'm here. He's a, he's a really great welder. I'm glad I'm learning from my own father. It's going to be a 73-story building. It's supposed to be the biggest building in Los Angeles, and I'm, I'm glad I'm able to work on it. Uh, when we finish the building, we get it to the top. We'll have a uh, ceremony where we have a, the last beam we place. We'll have the American flag and an evergreen tree on it. The symbol of uh, life and a completion of a great project and uh, life for all the people who occupy this building after we're done. This here's a chain come along. We use it for such applications where you can't push something over. You got to get it pulled over. And uh, it's a heavy duty tool. Keep going. Keep going, Jesse. It's pulling the wall over this way together with the column. Going, Jesse? We got a ways to go. All right, you see that? There we go. Nice. Yeah, release it. Tap it. Right there, brother. Good. Hey. No, no, tighten it up just a quarter. Go right there, right there. All right. Looks beautiful. Right where we need to be. You gotta have a backbone, and you gotta like to work hard. If you can't hack working hard, if you can't hack being out in the sun in the elements, then this job ain't this job ain't for you, you know? But if you like getting your hands dirty and you really take pride in your work and you like being a part of something, then, then this is for you. One, two, three, round! One, two, three, round! We are cross-bracing two columns into one. This is the main support for the elevator wall elevator and for the opening. Wall. The openings in between the walls you have to have real good reinforcing for the openings. And I love it, man. We get we get things done. We get things done together, and I like that. It's a team, a team effort. I mean. My job is to look ahead and make sure the other teams that come on board understand how important it is that this job has rules, guidelines, and that people have some pride in what they're doing, which they're, they're obviously showing right now. Once that Wilshire Grand uh, project is finished, we're going to have a lot of pride. So when we walk downtown LA, we can uh, hold our hands with our little grandchildren and our children and say, that is our building. Craftsmanship, as far as I'm concerned, means uh, quality of work. Uh, like I say, I like working with my hands. It's uh, pretty much of a challenge for me to, uh, to do certain things that I pretty much didn't think I could do. Once I put my head to it, pretty much can get it done. Uh, this is the heat and frost insulators facility uh, for the uh, insulators and also the fire stoppers. We do all of our training here for the hands-on and also the lecture. So as, I, as I'll show you the facility here, you'll see the, what the apprentices have to do to, to qualify as a journeyman after a five-year apprenticeship program. Uh, make sure everything's, you know, unison, line, everything lines up, laps line up, no gaps, no leaks, everything's flush. It's a good trade to get into, I and mean, if they want to make a good living, I definitely, you know, say they come in and do it. 
I like the industry itself. You know, you not constantly in one place at a, you know every day. Uh, you know, it's kind of exciting the work. You know, it's, you're actually building something, constructing something in life, making something out of something. You know what I mean? You can actually, even though you can't see your work externally, you know that you've done work in that building. You know, and you actually did something. You know, to improve the society, not bring it down. I like the way, you know, we actually go out there and, you know, we look at, let's say, the pipe and the ending results with the metal and everything. It looks really nice. So it's, it's a, I guess you can say it's a good satisfaction that you have knowing that you were able to help complete that job. Okay. Let me know. One of the things that I tell high school students at job fairs or, you know, even when I run across individuals that are young and excited about life and ready to start somewhere, is that uh, it may not be for everyone, but it's an exciting job. It's on the run. I mean, it's, it's, it's really competitive. It's goal-orientated. So, you know, for the person that, that is looking for that exciting career, this is definitely it. I'm here today um, to a building an abatement, uh, abatement unit, which is to contain, like you would do this in, a, uh, in the refinery or anywhere you want to contain asbestos and remove it. Well, I'm a hard worker, so um, just pay attention, learn as much as I can from all the guys, all the instructors. Um, build a good life for me and my family, a good career. And I know I can do it with the union. Yeah. Oh, they're a great group of guys. They make you feel very comfortable. They take care of me, so I enjoy working with them. So if we can bring somebody in here and mentor them, you know, as we go and as we transition out, they transition in, the program will continue to grow and escalate. And I see there, there's no limits to that once we do it. You know what, I went through the apprenticeship through Local 12 and it was, uh, that was instrumental in, in, in me learning the, the proper uh, operation of a crane. Um, I learned from journeymen that have been doing it for a long time and so I think the apprenticeship was a really, was a key in my success in becoming an operator on a crane that, of this high profile. That's a TG1900, has a single line pole of 57,500 pounds, pick up a lot of weight. And they use these kind of cranes in tight quarters. You can see all the buildings that we're in here in downtown LA. There comes Casey right now with his hooks. And you can see a good operator. You can see how smooth and steady that hook is. A good crane operator would pretty much be able to put the, put the hooks right in your hand without much of an effort. Now it takes that takes a lot of years of experience to get the hooks to be that smooth and steady. Casey's been an operator for many years. He's really good. <laughs> I didn't even know he was coming down with it. Thanks for that, Casey. I was demonstrating the smoothness of a good operator. I'm supposed to be on one of the 1100 footers on crane number two. Yeah, I want that view. <laughs> It'll be a pretty nice view at night. Alrighty then. This is the good. This is the good crane with the good air conditioning. Well, this crane's 180 feet up in the air, and we're uh, we're helping them build the decking down there, and we're just moving around plywood and and some rebar. Now this is one unique job. You can see over there. Right where tower crane number three is booming down, you can see, uh, I'm sorry, tower crane number one is booming down right there. And you can see the big block. That's where they're going to be putting in tower crane number two. Yeah, go ahead. Says your buddy Miguel from Conco. Can I get a pick at your four o'clock? Over here, we're going to grab this column. And we're going to move it about 10, 12 feet to my left. 10 for Miguel coming to you. So I can see that pretty pretty good, but he kind of fine tunes me in there. You know, I got another, I can see it usually within a, a few feet of, each, uh, of where I need to go, but he'll fine tune me sometimes because the, the angle you're looking at. And a lot of times I can see something happening before they see it, before, before they tell me. I can see it, I can see it catching on the side of that cape, the, the column before he told me to stop. So we always try and. 
there. Try and be proactive. It's it's kind of cool to be the crane operator. You know, it, it does. It pays well. <laughs> it's probably one of the better paying jobs on the on on the job, but with that comes the responsibility. So it's worth it. You know, it was all the book books book learning through the through the school, but also working on the job where you learn a lot of experience. And that's what I enjoyed was the experience part, getting hands on and all the guys in the field teaching you stuff that's out of the book as well, hand in hand. Our craft cannot be learned just in books. Without on the job skills and training, you cannot become a craftsman. So it is so important for our journey level people, our men and women of the trade, to continually be able to instruct and teach, particularly our apprentices, on what the trade is, how we work, and who we are, and pass those skills on. I try to teach him whatever I can to make his job easier so he doesn't hurt himself, be safe, efficient, and he does the same for me. I learn stuff from him all the time. It's a great sense of accomplishment when you can see what you've done. Most any trade, you can see what you physically have built. Like I worked on other buildings downtown here. I see it all the time. Great sense of pride when you put stuff together.